Operating your FTDX10 from your PC is a lot of fun. I've been doing it for a while and so have many others. But not having that uh, waterfall and the ability to check the bands with an SDR uh, is kind of limiting. But maybe we can fix that. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP. Recently, one of our club members, uh, Devin, K4OZI, was working on a modification for his FTDX10 radio. Uh, I've got one of those myself, that's the Yesu uh, FTDX10. Very nice radio. And he found a modification for it and purchased it and installed it and gave us some documentation on this project that he did. So we wanted to share that with you folks. Uh, for this week's video. And so here you can see it's from Radio Spectral and it's the FTRX10 and it's a daughter board that you can quickly and easily install into your FTDX10 radio that gives you a pigtail that you take out the back of the radio and allows you to connect to uh, your favorite SDR and allows you to get the SDR features and waterfalls and everything when you're controlling your radio via your PC, which, again, a lot of people like to do. Uh, I do that myself with my FTDX10. But when you do that, of course, you're not using the front of the radio and you don't get the waterfall anymore and that kind of thing. So with this add-on, this modification, you can get that again and have that with your other controls that you may be uh, using to uh, work with your radio. Now, um, Radio Spectral also has uh, this kind of a solution for the ICOM 7300s and also the ICOM 9700s. And who knows, maybe other radios to come. They've got the installation guide. So uh, here we're just going to step through and kind of show what he did. It's all outlined in that installation guide that we saw a moment ago that's, uh, of course, available for this. Uh, you start by simply taking the cover off of your radio. And as always, uh, you know, fair warning here, anytime you consider doing any modifications to your radio, uh, do so at, at your own advice. Uh, you know, be careful. Uh, watch for electrostatic discharge and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But uh, we start by taking the outer cover off the radio. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Uh, which is just a few screws, and then you take this inner cover off, which again is just a couple of screws, maybe four, and you get access to the main board of the uh, the radio. So here we're taking a look at the main board of the radio, and um, it's, uh, of course, like most things, kind of looks a little bit busy, but they found a spot where they can mount this daughter board, and you're going to route the cable out through the uh, port. It's in the upper left corner there that we can see in this view, for uh, where you would plug in your tuner for the radio. There's enough room there where you can uh, route this cable. So here we can see the cables routed out the hole that's already pre-cut where you would plug in the tuner part. And um, you can see it's a, it's a pretty small diameter cable, little pigtail that you get, it comes with the kit. Route it through there so that you'll have the connector that you can use on the outside of the radio. And then we're gonna see uh, on the inside of the radio, how do you mount that daughter board? And, uh, and then connect the other end of this cable to it, which is just a small little connector. Now, the nice thing about this kit, and here, of course, you can see that pigtail sticking out the back of the radio where that tuner port already existed. And as we'll see, it doesn't even block the use of the tuner port. You can still uh, plug into your tuner port. But one thing that's nice about this particular kit, I know for the FT, uh, you know, FTDX10, uh, there's no soldering involved. Nothing permanent is changed with your radio. It's an add-on you can quickly install. You see the big screw in the center of this screenshot. We're going to remove that screw and then reuse it. There's a standoff that comes with the kit, and the daughter board sits right in this area where they have room. And <clears throat> there's no permanent changes to your radio, so you can put this in, and then you could take it out again, and, uh, and it would be just like it was originally from the factory. So that's really nice about the kit. Uh, so... Here we've seen we've taken out that screw, which again you'll uh, you'll reuse, and there's a standoff that comes with the kit that you're going to screw into that location, 
that rises up and then holds the daughter board that is the, the main part of the kit. And then you connect that uh, external cable that we routed through the tuner port uh, to the daughter board. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, verify that everything is touching and, and working correctly. So here we've installed that standoff. Again, that all comes in the kit. And then you'll uh, set the daughter board on top, as we'll see in a moment. And you just take the screw and screw it into the top of that uh, standoff. Uh, again, no soldering required, no cutting required, no permanent changes to your radio. And it gives us the um, ability to take the signals that the radio is getting from your primary antenna and get it out to an SDR, a waterfall. So here he's pointing out that uh, he's put that screw back in. And that's going to hold that daughter board. You can see the daughter board's kind of sitting there. And it just is going to physically touch the two points it needs. It's going to touch uh, a plus 8 volt point on the motherboard and the um, receive signal input uh, on the motherboard. It just touches those. Again, no soldering or permanent modifications required. So here we just see that he's got that screw installed. There you see the motherboard. It's just sitting there on that standoff. And you can see the cable that we routed in through that tuner port uh, that's routed in there and the little connector uh, for it. And you see there's other kinds of, those kinds of connectors on the motherboard that they use already for other things. And that's it. You're pretty much done. That's the installation. That's really all there is to it. Uh, quick, simple, uh, clean, no messes, no soldering, no cutting. Um, and just uh, verify that everything works. Of course, they go through that in the installation guide. Verify that everything works correctly. Make sure everything, uh, as far as the orient, you know, how you oriented that daughter board is all correct. So those pins, there's two pins, make sure they touch where they need to touch. And that's it. If uh, When you turn on your radio and you verify it works, shut it down, put the covers back on, and just begin enjoying your radio with uh, you know your external uh, SDR. So here we're just kind of seeing that. You've got to uh, use some tape and he routed that cable out and he just taped it down to keep it nice and neat. And we see the pigtail coming out the back of the radio where that tuner port is. So it couldn't be much of an easier install. Uh, almost, uh, almost dare I say, uh, disappointing in its lack of soldering and, <laughs> and, uh, and cutting and, and maybe other things that, uh, that we kind of like to do sometimes. But in this case, with your nice, you know, fairly, you know, expensive radio, uh, you don't really have to worry about doing too much to it. Uh, and again, here, the covers are back on. You can see the pigtail there on the bottom left coming out that tuner port, but it's not actually blocking the tuner port. It's just hanging there and you can actually still plug in and use your tuner port. It doesn't uh, negate that. And you didn't have to drill any extra holes. Now, I mean, you could theoretically drill an extra hole if you want to go that route and make it a little bit more of a uh, kind of a permanent thing, but uh, you don't have to do it that way. So there's a good shot where you can see there's, uh, and you can move that uh, out of the way. You can still use that, uh, that tuner connection. So um, I have not uh, done this mod myself, but I am very interested in this because I do control my uh, FTDX10 with software on my PC. And that's, that's, you know, the one sort of lament that I think a lot of us, you know, have had with, with those kinds of, of setups with our various radios is a lot of times you use the, lose the waterfall. And, and if you've ever worked with an SDR, those can be really nice. And there we go. Now you can see that he's got a tuner cable plugged in and that uh, other cable just, uh, just pushes over to the side there. So um, really nice uh, a mod, you know, modification for the radio, something to uh, consider, right? Obviously, it's not something that uh, you necessarily have to have, but if you uh, use your radio a lot from your PC and, and control it from your PC, which you can do with this, uh, you can actually control from the SDR. Uh, like, like with SDR Uno here, I've used this and set it up with OmniRig, uh, which is a driver support. And you get your waterfalls and everything, and you can watch uh, all the bands and stuff. And then you can tune your radio from this SDR, from your PC, uh, if you hook it in that way. You can just get, you know, the, the waterfall and, and the SDR uh, scanning capabilities. Or you, if you take it to sort of to this degree, you've got the signal now coming out of the radio. And then with OmniRig and, and stuff, and I've done videos on how to set that up. Uh, you can control the radio from here. You could find a signal there, a spike, click on it, and it'll tune your radio right to whatever that was. And, uh, and you can quickly check things out that way. So pretty cool project. And I'm glad uh, Devin shared that with us again, uh, K4OZI. Uh, keep your eyes open, folks. You never know when some company is going to come out with a unique product for one of our radios. 
So that'll wrap this one up. This is Chris, KY4CKP, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We'll see you folks in the next video, 73.